Today we're going to talk about integrating factors for linear differential equations. To begin, let's review some concepts from last time when we discussed linear differential equations. We began with some definition. Recall that a first order differential equation is an equation of the form dy dt equals f of ty for some function f. A solution is a function y of t such that y prime of t equals f of t comma y of t. This equation is said to be separable is if f is the product g of t times h of t of two functions. Such an equation is said to be autonomous if g of t is a constant function. This equation is said to be a linear differential equation if the right hand side, f, equals a of t times y plus b of t for some functions a of t and b of t. Such an equation is said to be homogeneous or unforced if b of t is identically zero. That is, f equals a of t times y. Otherwise, such an equation is said to be non-homogeneous or forced. We're going to spend some time today discussing how to solve a differential equation of the form dy dt equals a of t times y plus b of t. To do so, last time we discussed what's called the linearity principle as well as the extended linearity principle. Let's say that y sub p is one particular solution to this non-homogeneous equation. Then the general solution, y of t, is in the form y sub h plus y sub p, where y sub h is a solution to the homogeneous equation. Next, the general solution to the homogeneous equation is as follows. y sub h equals a constant times the exponential of an integral a of t dt. Today, we want to spend more time discussing how to solve this non-homogeneous equation by explaining how you can actually find a particular solution. Let's start with some ideas. With the homogeneous equation, we could multiply then integrate. Indeed, if we had dy dt equals a of t times y, we could multiply both sides by dt, divide both sides by y, and then integrate, and we'd instantly find that y of t is a constant times the exponential of an integral a of t dt. In a slightly different way, let's say that we were to multiply both sides of our non-homogeneous equation by a general function mu of t. We'd find that dy dt equals a of t times y plus b of t now becomes mu times dy dt minus a of t times mu times y equals mu of t times b of t. If you notice here in the middle, we just subtracted a of t times y from both sides. Now let's take a closer look at the left-hand side of this equation. What if the left-hand side were the derivative of something? That is, what if the left-hand side were maybe d by dt of a product mu of t times y? Then by using the product rule, we would simply find that mu of t must be equal to negative a of t times mu. Fortunately, we can actually solve this equation. Here's our main proposition for today. The function mu of t, which is the exponential of negative the integral a of t dt, satisfies the equation mu prime equals negative a of t times mu. Next, a particular solution to the homogeneous to the non-homogeneous differential equation dy dt equals a of t times y plus b of t is the following function. y sub p equals 1 over mu of t times the integral mu of tau v of tau times d tau. Let's explain why this proposition is true. First, we're going to determine this function mu of t. The idea is that we have a separable equation. Indeed, mu prime equals negative a of t times mu, so let's divide both sides by mu and multiply both sides by dt. We find 1 over mu d mu equals negative a of t dt. We can now integrate both sides and then exponentiate to undo the logarithm to find that mu of t equals a constant c1 times the exponential of negative an integral a of t dt. Since this constant c sub 1 is arbitrary, let's choose it to be 1 for now. Next, we need to determine a particular solution, y of t. 
We'll do this by multiplying both sides of our differential equation by mu. What we mean is as follows. Let's consider the derivative of the product mu of t times y. Using the product rule, we find that this is equal to mu times dy dt plus mu prime times y. You'll see here in red where we will substitute mu prime with negative a of t times mu of t. This means we can factor out of mu of t to find that this is now equal to mu of t times dy dt minus a of t times y. But since y is a solution to our non-homogeneous differential equation, we find that this is equal to mu of t times b of t. Now we see that d by dt of the product, mu times y, equals the product, mu times b. We'll integrate both sides to find that mu of t times y of t equals this integral, mu of tau, b of tau, d tau, plus a constant c. And finally, we can divide by mu of t to actually find our explicit solution to our non-homogeneous differential equation. This function mu of t is called an integrating factor. Literally, it's a function so that if we multiply our non-homogeneous differential equation on both sides by it, then we see that the left-hand side is the derivative of a product, and we can use this to integrate and then find our solution. Let's put all of this together in an algorithm. Say that we wish to solve a linear differential equation in the form dy dt equals a of t times y plus b of t. To find the solution, we'll perform the following steps. First, we'll compute an integrating factor as the following exponential. It's the exponential of negative an integral a of t dt. Second, we'll compute the integral u of t as the integral of mu of t times b of t dt. And finally, we can return our general solution y of t as the ratio a constant divided by mu of t plus u of t divided by mu of t. We'll end today by discussing a couple of examples. First, let's consider the initial value problem ds dt equals r times s of t plus b, where s of 0 equals s naught. We discussed this in more detail in the previous lesson. Notice that a of t equals r is a constant, so our integrating factor mu of t is simply e to the negative rt. Indeed, since a of t is a constant r, the integral of a of t dt is r times time. So our mu of t is the exponential of negative r times time. Next, we see that b of t is another constant, in this case it's the constant b, so we find the integral u of t is just the integral of b times e to the negative rt dt, and since b is a constant, this is equal to negative b over r times e to the negative rt. Finally, we can compute the general solution, s of t, as a constant divided by mu of t plus u of t divided by mu of t. This is equal to a constant times e to the positive rt minus b over r. But now remember that we have an initial value problem. So keeping track of the initial condition, we then see that s0 must be c minus b over r. So we find that our constant c must be s0 plus b over r. And putting all of this together, we find that our desired solution to the initial value problem is s of t equals e to the rt times s0 plus e to the rt minus 1 over r times b. Let's give a second example, but now using a slightly different method. We'll find the general solution to the following differential equation. dy dt plus 2 over t times y equals t minus 1. First, let's try to compute our integrating factor. Notice that a of t equals negative 2 over t. If we integrate a of t dt, we see that this is equal to negative 2 log absolute value of t. Now, mu of t is the exponential of negative this integral, so this will be the exponential of twice log of t, which is just equal to t squared. This, again, is our integrating factor. 
the whole idea of the integrating factor is that we wish to multiply both sides by this factor so that the left hand side will be the derivative of the product. So to this end, let's multiply both sides of our differential equation by t squared. Here we'll start with our differential equation. Multiply by t squared to find t squared dy dt plus twice t times y equals t squared times t minus y. Again, the left hand side is the derivative of the product t squared times y, and this must be equal to t cubed minus t squared. We can integrate both sides to find t squared y equals t to the fourth over four minus t cubed over three plus a constant c. And finally, by dividing by t squared, we find the desired general solution. y of t equals t squared over four minus t over three plus a constant divided by t squared. Thanks very much for watching.